This fall, I took a six-day trip up to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan to my cabin in the woods up by the shore of Lake Superior. I generally have a lot of projects going on, and sometimes it's hard to finish those projects, and stuff is left undone. Today, I need to take care of my fireplace hearth and put these blocks underneath my wood stove. Now the pavers that I'm using are an inch and a half thick. So when I installed this wood stove, I put some scrap wood underneath these stove legs. Two thicknesses of three quarter inch, which would make an inch and a half. So later on I could just pull them out and then shove these pavers underneath the legs. Not the best way to do it, but I didn't have the pavers handy when I installed the wood stove. And when you're in a building project, you gotta keep the ball rolling. So I installed the board floor, threw down some scrap to put the stove on, and got the stove in. Now it's time to put the pavers in. One year later. Now you could go to the hardware store and buy one of those wood stove mats that's tin and it's over top of some kind of fiberboard and it's fireproof, but they are ridiculously expensive. Another way that you could solve that problem is just with masonry pavers, cement blocks, bricks. I don't think these pavers cost more than a couple dollars each. You only need four of them for this. And I could have covered the entire corner of the cabin in pavers or even cement blocks and raise the area up and then cap it with pavers for, for $40 probably. There's lots of ways to solve this issue though. You know the bottom line is you just want something fireproof underneath your stove so in the event that you open the door and hot coals fall out, that's not going to burn into your floor. It's going to land on something fireproof. A lot of ways to fix this problem. I have to say that looks a whole lot better than that wood stove just sitting up on a couple pieces of scrap. Not only is it much better looking, but it's a much safer setup too. We're having ourselves quite a warm spell, very late in the year, and the leaves are still hanging on, which is amazing. So it's a good time of year to get up here and just soak it up. And then I find this. The outhouse is an absolute disaster. There's no question what happened here. A bear got into the outhouse. That plank right there on the ground has six or seven screws in it. And it was ripped straight out. And it sure is a good thing that I showed up completely unprepared to fix anything. Let's see what I have for tools. I have a shovel and a rake. Oh, I got a C-clamp too and a sledgehammer, a trash bag, and an assortment of odd nails. Now there's a lot of bears on this property. We see them on the trail cam. I had one walk right into camp on me, but we've never had any damage from them. Now check this out. There's six or seven two-inch screws ripped straight out of the board they were screwed into. Good thing I brought a screw gun. Generally when I come up here, I have quite a few tools with me, but for this trip, I don't really have hardly anything. That's my fault. But I do have the basics that I need to get this outhouse put back together. It's just going to be a little awkward. In Alaska, what people would do with remote cabins is they would make what are called unwelcome mats, which is just a chunk of plywood full of sheetrock screws or nails, and then they'd lay that down in front of the door or in front of the windows when they leave the cabin. When a bear goes to look in the window or goes to look at the front door, 
they're likely to get a good sharp poke in the foot, and then they leave the place alone. Now, using this sledgehammer to drive nails does kind of feel like swimming with your boots on, but it does get the job done. It is the tool that I have, so it's obviously the right one for the job. I think it's great just the fact that there are bears around. I think being in country that has bears just makes it more fun to be out in the wilderness. On the other hand, bears are really curious. They're freakishly strong and they do love to tear things apart. If you ever get a chance, read the Stephen Herrera book, Bear Attacks, Causes and Avoidances. It's a fantastic book about bear attacks and just bear behavior in general. The downside is the bear made a big mess. The upside is, is it wasn't too difficult to put the place back together. Unfortunately, I don't think there's anything that's bear proof. The bear could tear this outhouse right down to the ground if it wanted to. You know, I just wanted to get inside and root through the trash, but maybe I'll just, uh, I wanna make sure I take the trash with me. And I might even leave the door open when I go, cause I'd hate to have to put it back together again. It still works. When I thought about coming up here for five or six days, I didn't expect to be repairing bear damage. I expected to be fishing. So that's what I'm gonna do this afternoon. I'm fishing a local lake that I've never been on before, and I'm really looking forward to it. Bought this rowboat for $75 and I sure have been enjoying it. Something about rowing around while you fish is just relaxing and simplistic. Not only that, but you don't have to register your boat that way. Some of the very earliest memories I have in life in general is pike fishing with my dad. We used to use big sucker minnows and bobbers. And in Alaska, I spent a lot of time fishing northerns. Whenever I get a chance to go fishing, if I have a preference, I fish pike. Well, I caught a couple fish, nothing worth keeping. But, you know, sitting out here on the water, it's good enough. I got bacon and eggs back at the cabin, so I really don't need fish, right? Every day that goes by just seems like the weather gets better and better. Warmer, more sunny, less humid. It's just been wonderful up here. Brooke is going to come up sometime later on this evening. I think this is day five. She's got some work she'd like to do down at her cabin on the other end of the property. I'm going to burn some brush. I have been cutting brush and not burning it for about a year now. And I need to uh, do a little bit of trimming too. So we're going to have ourselves a nice fire this afternoon and get rid of some of this extra brush that I have laying around. I'm going to look right now. Now at this building site, I have been very particular about pruning up these trees. I want to make sure I'm cutting stuff that I want cut. So I've been really taking my time. Over the last year, I've cut down very few trees. Well, now it's day six, and I'm packing up and getting ready to leave. The weather forecast on the radio is calling for an inch of rain starting a little bit later this afternoon. I've got some projects that I want to do on this property later on this year. And I know the weather is just going to get colder. And I know it should be colder right now. But I'm just taking this time to do absolutely nothing. I like to wander the property. I like to have late breakfast, drive around the back roads, do a little bit of fishing. That's why I built this cabin in the first place. Have a place to go where you, you can just decompress.
Well, nothing lasts forever. And my good weather has finally given way to just a nasty drizzle. You know that kind of drizzle where if you're out in it for any amount of time, you just get soaking wet. I've ran out of eggs, and my power station's out of power, so I won't have lights tonight. And I think it's just finally time to head out. But I sure have had a fantastic time while I was here. Hard to believe it's just been a year since I broke ground on this little cabin. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me for this one year anniversary of my little off-grid cabin in the woods. My name is Dave Whipple and you've been watching Bush Radical. And be radical, eh? See you soon.